My name is Jamie Allison. I'm, a, I'm head of Cumbria at Napton Solicitors and head of real estate. Uh, we've got an interesting morning this morning because we're going to be talking to the managing director of a great manufacturing business uh, based in Ulverston. Uh, that's Gareth Brunton from Bender UK. And the reason for this is that uh, Naphthans have developed uh, a specialist team of lawyers servicing the manufacturing sector. And as part and parcel of um, explaining what we do to clients and how we do it, we also want to gather insight from some of our clients as to what they're seeing in the current macroeconomics, the economy, and how they go about things in servicing their own customers. So welcome, Gareth, from Bender UK. Thank you very much for giving us some of your time. I think I'd like to start, if possible, please, with um, you just giving us a bit of a potted history about who Bender UK is in Ulverston. OK, well, thanks very much, Jamie, for uh, allowing me to come on today. I'm really uh, excited to, to join you on this today. So, um, yeah. So a little bit about Bender. It, um, it's a third generation German family owned business, um, celebrated its 75th anniversary last year in 2021. It was born out of a, a fantastic idea by Walter Bender back in the 1930s, uh, who was a mining inspector in a, in a small town in central Western Germany. And he recognized an opportunity in the electrical safety market and invented and patented the first absolute isometer, as it was known at the time, which uh, more latterly has become known as an insulation monitor. So after a, a relatively low key period, I think for about 20 years or so, there was maybe only 20 staff, um, he managed to persuade his son Christian to, to retrain from being an architect to being an electrical engineer. Right. And he, he sort of saw the potential in, the, in this sort of technology and set about widening the company in a, initially in the rest of Germany, but then he moved that to, to all parts of the globe. And um, he set distribution agreements up all over the world, started obviously with the, the larger, more advanced countries to start with. And um, more latterly, these distributors turned into wholly owned subsidiaries, such as Bender UK. And there are 16 of these now today, covering places like the US, China, Italy, Benelux, you know, all, all of the, the, the sort of the main places, as well as obviously Germany, which remains the, the, the centre and the headquarters. So um, in addition to that, you, you have also got, you know, pretty much every country on the globe is, is represented in some way, shape or form and has access to the Bender technology. So it's, uh, it's been a really interesting journey, um, Bender UK celebrates its 25th anniversary this year. So um, we're really proud of that. We're going to be doing something uh, next week, actually, um, to, to sort of celebrate the occasion. So, yeah, that's a little bit of a, an insight into, into the Bender group. Thank you for that. Yeah, that sounds uh, fantastic with the 25th anniversary. Um, going a bit deeper in terms of what you do, uh, because there'll be some people that know the name and have an idea as to what you do, but specifically, um, you excel in innovation in handling, handling electric power and making it available wherever and whenever people need it, but safely. That's the bottom line philosophy as far as I understand it. Do you want to give us a bit more detail about that and maybe explain which applications um, that you excel in? Yeah, so, you know, again, in simple terms, that the Bender products are there to ensure patient safety, and that's generally by means of early detection of, of any developing faults on a system, but it's also... A, a big uh, drive is the continuity of supply and operation. So it's it's clearly much better to know something is going to fail before it actually does. Um, and this is the philosophy that Bender have adopted. Um, power systems come in very varied forms. So we have you have a grounded system, which is a common thing that you'll see across your homes and businesses in the UK. But um, predominantly, the insulation monitor is used in an ungrounded power system. Where there's no actual direct connection to earth and therefore there's no route back for a, a, a fault to to trip any uh, protective devices so it's very important therefore that you have some form of indication and that's where the insulation monitor comes in over the years they've developed systems that will work on any power system so whether it's high resistance grounded or or a normal grounded system or ungrounded we've got solutions for everything but generally speaking the philosophy is that we will prevent something happening before it's going to, um, or warn you that something's going to fail, and we will also increase the 
the, the patient safety as well as a result of, of these warnings. So it's uh, it's widely used in, in applications where power and the um, reliability of power is essential. So for us, healthcare, um, shipbuilding, railway, um, oil and gas, places where you, you really can't afford for the, the power to go off. These are obviously the, 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 the predominant places where the technology is deployed. Understood. So cutting edge in, in many ways. And a lot of people, well, globally, in whichever sector, and we've got quite a few challenges that we've overcome over the last two and a half, three years. We've got more challenges forthcoming for various different macroeconomic reasons. What would you say is your main challenge as an employee, an employer in the manufacturing sector? Yeah, you're quite right. It's been a very challenging period at the moment um, for anybody who's manufacturing anything. Um, you know, you, these range from you've got skill shortages. You know, there's there's never been lower unemployment in this country. Um, you've got the the ongoing supply issues with with raw materials. You know that that covers a whole multitude of, of things. There's the you know the ability to be able to have the capacity to match the expectations of the and the demands of the of the customers. You've got you know the cost, the controlling of costs, which are you know the energy increases and all the rest of it that's it's spiraling out of control. So you've got you've got to manage that. And then the the geopolitical situation that we're faced with at the minute, you know, it's uh, it's a it's an interesting time if that's the the right terminology, but um, it's certainly challenging. And you know, as manufacturers across the, the whole of the country are doing it, it's a really challenging time for everybody. So. It is, and you mentioned the phrase there, skill shortage. Um, you're based in um, a centre of excellence, really, along the Furness Peninsula in, in the southern part of uh, Cumbria. You've got a lot of heavy, technical, well-known brands that uh, employ a lot of people. How many people are in your business, and what sort of skill shortages do you have to cater for, and how do you overcome those? Okay, yeah, deep so, questions in one there. Yeah, no, no problem. So at the moment we're uh, we're at ninety people, so it's been a, a significant increase over the in particular the last five years, but um, and more latterly in the last two years to be honest. So COVID, whilst it was uh, obviously a major impact on a lot of people, it, it was actually good for, for the Bender business um, in in terms of coming out of that period. We've we've got a much bigger team. Um, we've we've actually been generally very fortunate in finding highly motivated and skilled staff. And um, I think one of the key drivers for this is that we, we've always tried to make the experience working at Bender an interesting, fun and an autonomous one. And um, I think this has led to a really loyal and high re highly retained team. Uh, many of the staff have been with us for, for over 10 years and, and you know an awful lot, high percentage over five. Um, and I think if you've got that continuity and that loyalty in your team, that it, it obviously leads to success. And um, we've, we've always been a, a company that have gone under the radar, probably globally, um, but certainly in the local area, you know, people would come along and who are you working for, Ben, and I've never heard of them. And that's something that um, my uh, predecessor, Steve Mason, was very keen to, to try to uh, improve the situation. And I've sort of carried that on and... Um, We've slowly but surely spread the word and, um, you know, we've gone from a, a very, very small team in, in Cumbria to, to a reasonable size one. And I'd like to think now that, you know, through a lot of the good work we've done, we, we've, we've, people are aware who Bend the UK are and what, what we do. And I think that helps when you're trying to attract new talent. So, you know, the other things that we've, um, we've done that's been successful is we've, we've tried to bring apprentices through. So that was an, an area in the... I was very keen to uh, to explore, and I think you know it's important that we give the the youth of of today and tomorrow the opportunity to to forge a career. And I hope that that's the thing that is really sits at the heart of things with me. It's um, Bender is a career. It's an opportunity to to forge a career path. It's not just somewhere you want. We want people to come for a a short stay and a short time. And there's so many different paths that you can follow in Bender. So you can start as an engineer, as I did. And end up as the managing director or you can start as an engineer and go down the sales route or you can go start as an engineer and go down an operations and projects route there are there's so many paths and, and 
a large percentage of our team now that are in more senior positions have all started in a at somewhere else in the business and i think that's been really really successful and of course it it, it ensures that the skill level and the knowledge of the company is kept within the team and, and that again i think is a is a key ingredient if we're trying to succeed so it does come across as a great um, family feel as well in your business i know a lot of people will probably say the same thing or try and mimic that same thing but i remember you do a family fun day barbecue in the summer um over the last few years or so that's that's clearly one thing that you do to try and envelope the family at bender what else do you do to uh, to look after the staff yeah well we, we we try to encourage um you know a lot of social things we have a social committee and they organize a lot of events and that could be as simple as just going for a walk or it could be as simple as going for a beer on a friday after work or a meal or um, we've had trips to the races. We do a, an annual caramel trip that uh, I think I've actually seen you seen you there before. I'm not sure <laughs> more, but, um, yeah, I think you have. We um, we do a, we have an annual Christmas party where everyone's invited, including partners. So that we, we you know that's um, something that we've we've always recognised is it's almost you know people's families have to endure the fact that the uh, partners are fathers or mothers are, are out of the business for a long period of time supporting it and it's good to give something back um we've tried to work with on a flexible basis so we've, we've worked hard to give people flexibility especially after covid so we no longer do a full um, fixed hours week we're on a you know a hybrid type working system where people can you know we don't open the office on a friday but you can still go in if you wish to but uh, generally speaking people have to do two days in the office um, some choose to do more, but um, it works really well. And I think that's the key to the future. It's flexibility, recognising that, you know, people have got lots of things going on in their lives and, and you don't need to be sat at a desk, chained to a desk eight till five to get the best results. It's about productivity and that can come at any any part of the day and, and actually getting out for a walk midday or, you know, going and picking the children up or dropping them off at school. You know, these are things that in the past wouldn't have been allowed now you know we big believers that, that actually helps with people's mindsets and, and the end result is more productivity and a more successful team so yeah i concur with all of that i think uh, the majority of us have adopted the, uh, the same working methods and, and it's for good reason as well and um, i just want to touch on on something really and, and i followed this chat for a number of years now and you'll know him um jürgen meyer who was the uh, previous CEO of Siemens. And one thing I followed with him uh, on our manufacturing journey is uh, his mantra of adopting new technologies and how he foresaw the fourth industrial revolution evolving in the UK and how the UK is, well, underinvested compared to our counterparts in Germany, as it happens. He, he, he spoke um, boldly about that. Um, where do you see uh, you, where you've adopted technology that gives you a competitive advantage in Bender? Yeah, well, to be honest, there's, there's been many areas over the years where we've, we've done this at Bender. I mean, obviously we brought the, the product, we invented the product and brought it to market. So you can go back as far as the, the sort of 75 years ago to, to, to look at an example of that. But, you know, just some that are relevant to, to the UK, I guess. Um, we were instrumental in the changing of the standards for the network rail. So all the rail signal insistent signal power systems um we're heavily involved there with with making working closely with them to give them uh, the solution that they needed and that just wasn't an off-the-shelf yellow box it was an actual solution that was developed with with other third parties and and people to to, to end up manufacturing a solution um healthcare is an area that you know pre-2000 there was no requirement for any equipment like Bender provide these days but um over the years we've been heavily instrumental in in changing and shaping the way that the the um the power systems are designed and developed with the, the electrical designers to the point where we we've brought products out that have completely transformed the way um that things are done and it's gone from being a very very basic system to a to an all singing and dancing almost bulletproof robust uh, resilient design which it needs to be because let's face it these are supporting operating theatres and intensive care areas where the last thing anybody needs is a power out so 
you know, it's it's been widely received and it's it's pretty much now the, the blueprint that everybody follows. So, you know, we we work on a lot, a lot of standard committees and therefore we get a bit of foresight of of what people are looking to do and where improvements could be made. So, um, yeah, I mean, they're, they're just two scenarios I can think of, Jamie. I mean, there's, there's countless, I'm sure, if I was... Yes, I'm sure there are, yeah, knowing your, knowing your product base and services. But, yeah, thank you for that. Um, the supply chain and supply issues. Um, we both probably suffer from uh, that in different ways. I know I've got many clients that uh, suffer from it in um, many global fashions. What sort of headache is it giving you? And um, when do you see it sort of calming down, if I can be as blasé as that? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Um, up until probably the last 12 months, I can honestly say at Bend UK, we've never really experienced any real issues with supply chain. So this year has been a, a real tester for us all. Um, and it sort of coincides with our biggest ever year as well so it's uh, the timing couldn't have been any worse from that perspective but um supply chain i mean it, it it literally covers everything there's there's global problems with shortages of raw materials there's the lack of semiconductors there's no microchips and all of these parts are needed in bender technology so um we've we've literally had to let customers down we've had to turn down orders in the past you know this is it's been as severe as that uh, fortunately, we work very closely with a lot of our, our customers who've been very, very um, tolerant and, uh, and appreciative of the situation. I mean, it's, you know, it's a widely known one. And um, we've also, while this has been going on, we've looked at other ways where we can try and alleviate the, the situation. So there's been a lot of product redesigns that have been ongoing, and, and that's helping to, to bring things forward a little bit. In terms of the when, it, when it'll end, um, the sooner the better would be the, the honest answer but um in reality i think we've, we've probably got at least another six months of of pain um, and we've just got to manage that as a team with our customers and our supply chain and hope that we can uh, we can get through the period uh, one thing on, on the back of that um thanks for that answer on the back of that one thing that um, i was quite taken aback by when we spoke last time is that you have adopted um, a really effective way of crming your customer base haven't you and that that starts from prospecting right through to repeat business just share with us how you um, look after your customers because it's um, it, it was very slick and professional from what i saw yeah thank you um yeah we're very proud of the, of the system and i mean this is something that started maybe 2012 so i can't take the credit for this actually but i was involved in it but um yeah we, we recognized that we had no way really of, of, of of recognizing where the customers were or actually storing the information centrally so we embarked on a long journey with a crm provider and um we we literally have a, a really slick system as you say that takes it from a the initial inquiry and it takes that customer journey right through from a you know we, we manage our projects through it we we place our orders through it we um we have a full history of what's gone on with conversations, um, emails, trails, et cetera, et cetera, with, with the, the customer. And then that we use a lot of workflows to, to be able to actually trigger things with other departments in the business. So they're aware that we can then, the after sales can kick in and we can actually make sure we support the customer in the, in the manner they do. We're using it to, um, we're using it for time, to manage time with, with our engineers. So rather than a, an old fashioned timesheet system, we're now, doing things all through this. We've got a mapping system to ensure that the engineers can be deployed in the, in the best and most foreseeable um, situation. We've got um, a, a system where the reports, one of the, the, the reporting system is much better now. So the customer experience is a very slick one. So in the past, it would have been a paper copy signed, sent back in the post to head office, sent back out to the customer. Now it's a, literally a click on an iPad and then it's back in the uh, in the cloud and then with the customer the next day in many instances. So that's come come on leaps and bounds. We, we, we use it essentially to manage the whole business now. It has become sort of the fundamental part of the business and everybody in the company works from it. Um, you know, it, it's been a really powerful tool and I, and I think 
you know, probably the biggest reason that we've we've grown as much as we have over the last ten years. So, yeah, I remember I remember seeing it and discussing it with you, um, probably through the lens of green eyes because it, it it clearly functions fantastically. So, yeah, that was a credit to see. Thank you. So, looking forward, then, bearing in mind you're the lead of the business, what do you want to see? And it's a ubiquitous question, but it's an important one nonetheless. What do you want to see? Um, from Bender in the next three to five years? What does it look like? Yeah, uh, another, an interesting question, Jeremy. Um, I think the, the opportunities for Bender, they, they really are endless. You know, it, this, this is one of the, the beauties of Bender as a company. We are so diverse and we operate in so many different sectors that, you know, basically wherever you, you want to continue to supply or greater personnel safety, there's, there's going to be a need. So, as everything becomes more digital and electric, electrified, then of course that plays into our hands. And you know, currently our biggest or fastest growing market is this electric vehicles market. So, you know, uh, we we literally are working with electric car manufacturers, buses, bikes, boats, vans, trucks, you name it. Anything that's a vehicle that's electric, we are literally doing something with them. And as well as the actual on vehicle equipment, we're also supplying a lot of charge station manufacturers with parts. So we're Bender's technology is really at the forefront of this, we call it e-mobility, but that sector, you know, we, we, we really are the, the primary go-to company globally. And that's probably one of the problems where we've got so many uh, supply chain issues because we need so many bits. But um, so that's not going to, to, to slow down anytime soon. In fact, it's only going in one direction. But uh, outside of that, you've got, you know, things like um, battery energy storage systems, which, are, you know, people are, are trying to look for alternative energy options. And, and this is another area where we can get involved. We are getting involved. Um, Digitisation, I touched on a bit of a buzzword, but, the, you know, a lot of that's going around. Cloud-based analytics. So we, we want to, we see an opportunity for all of our products Many of them already are there, but to be actually cloud accessible. So we see the day where we, we don't need to be constantly going, putting a man on the ground. We can actually do things remotely. And we, we want to try to, to, to develop, and we're in the process of developing, like a, we call it like a, a Bender Pulse or a managed service solution, whereby you know, we, we feel we can, instead of the customer finding out they've got a fault and then having to get somebody in there team to go and have a look at it and then contact us and then deploy an engineer we can almost take care of this for them in advance so we can actually tell them there's a fault materializing and actually we can sort it out from our desk wherever we are in the world in in many instances and that obviously has a huge benefits in terms of the efficiency of the department but it also has benefits in terms of you know helping people achieve the carbon neutral footprint because we you know it, we, can, we, we can probably reduce the cost of the yeah. situation and we can obviously improve the uptime. So it's a very, very exciting time for us. Um, and probably the hardest question is where is that priority to focus? Because there literally is so many areas that we could look at. So it's a very, very good time for us. And I'm hugely excited by what the future three to five years could bring. And um, if we can get the supply chains sorted and get over these supply issues, then I can only see, you know, further growth for certain. So, yeah, it's, Fantastic. Uh, it's a good time. Good. Thank you for uh, sharing that insight. A great position to be in. I'm going to finish on um, something that you normally find on Radio 4's Desert Island Discs to some extent. Um, you're on a desert island. You can only take three things with you. What are they? <laughs> well, that's a good question. You have to be careful how you answer this one. But... Um, I'm going to um, I'm going to answer it from a, and assume that you know, the survival perspective has already been considered and the uh, the necessary essentials are already on there, such as water and uh, and the rest of it. But um, I think for me, uh, I'd, I'd need some form of communication. So maybe whether that's my phone or my uh, laptop, and so I could speak to my family and my friends and keep in touch with everybody. I, I, I like speaking to people. Um, I'd also need some way to follow me, my love of sports. So, you know, I, I love most sports, but pre 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 
primarily football and horse racing are my two biggest passions. So outside of work, I spend a lot of time involved with those. And um, I think just to help me relax a little bit, I'd probably need a, a good case of red wine. And um, in particular, like a full-bodied red. So perhaps a Barolo or a, a Valpolicella or something like that would be uh, preferable. But um, I think if I had those three things, then I'd be pretty good. It sounds good to me. Sounds like near <laughs> utopia. Well, look, Gary, thank you very much for giving us some insight in what you do. It's fantastic to hear what you do. It's great to see what you do. Uh, it's clearly had an impact on, on the area in Alberston as well. So uh, hats off to you and the team. Fantastic. Thank you very much. My pleasure, Jamie. And thanks very much for inviting me along. Thank you.